Today, we're going to be riding the coolest airport train in the world, with its unique spaceship-esque design. We'll go from the centre of bustling Osaka, sitting in first-class comfort on this quirky train. This is the Nankai Rapid Beta, speeding to Kansai International, one of Japan's island airports. Join me for an exciting trip on this unique train. Hello and welcome back to another video. Today I'm here in Osaka, Japan, and I'm going to be catching the coolest airport train in the world. I'll be riding the Rapid Limited Express service down to Kansai International Airport. Let's go! Our train to the airport today departs from the Nankai Electric Railways terminus in Osaka, easily spotted by the Rapid Globe logo on the roof. This is Namba Station, a name shared by four separate stations in Osaka. This particular one is served by Nankai Electric Railway, a private operator running south from the city into the Nankaido region. The station also serves as a large shopping centre, as is the case with most major stations in Japanese cities. The departure area for trains is also clearly signposted in Japanese, English, Korean and Chinese. And you certainly won't have any trouble finding something to eat before the ride to the airport. The station concourse is found on the third floor. Here, there is a row of ticket machines and a ticket office. I had a bit of trouble with ticketing, but I'll get into that a little later on. This area also has a few eateries of its own, in case you have a last minute craving for any Japanese delicacies before you leave the country. My train today will be the 1405 Rapid Beta Limited Express to Kansai International Airport, departing from track 9. Access to the platforms is controlled by ticket gates, so make sure to have your ticket to hand when getting ready to board the train. We'll get to my futuristic looking ride very soon, but first, a quick look around the platforms. Most signage at the station points towards tracks 5 and 6, where you can find the so-called Airport Express service. This offers a frequent and cheap way to reach the airport, but what you save in money is certainly lost in comfort. The ends of the platforms here feature nice displays, which have timetables as well as local information about the places you can find along the route. By the way, did you know that the Nankai Electric Railway is actually twinned with a fellow narrow-gauge line in Europe? In 2017, the Swiss company MOB and Nankai Electric Railway signed a partnership agreement, celebrating the many similarities these far-apart lines share. Anyway, here's the futuristic-looking train that will be taking me to Kansai International Airport today, waiting to board from Platform 9. One of these trains departs from Namba every hour, with a more frequent service running during peak time. This is one of the Nankai 50,000 series trains, and would you believe that they were built way back in 1994? The fleet was designed by local Japanese architect Hiroyuki Wakabayashi, who shaped the train around the concept of outdated future. A nearby station in Kyoto is also based on the same theme, and you can certainly see the design similarities. The design isn't to everyone's tastes, with a distinct beak-like shape. But personally, I really like the design, and think it looks strikingly iconic. Let me know in the comments what you think of this unique train. Oh, by the way, they even have a special superhero who dresses up like this train. How cool is that? All rapid services depart from Platform 9 at Namba Station. To board, you need both a ticket and a limited express reservation. This is where things get confusing, as you can, in fact, purchase the reservation online. But you'll still need to visit a ticket machine to buy the actual ticket. Two different types of seating are available. You can find a regular seat in coaches 1 to 4, with coaches 5 and 6 featuring the super seat. Super seat is effectively first class, and you get a little extra room for a small additional charge. 
I've reserved a super seat here in coach 6, so let's get on. Immediately upon boarding, you are blown away by the futuristic design, which is just as special inside as it is outside. My seat is number 21, a window seat. All seats face forwards and rotate at the end of the journey. Today's route sees us heading through the city of Osaka, making a few stops on the southwesterly trip to Kansai Airport, just before which we will cross the Skygate Bridge. The journey is scheduled to take 37 minutes to cover the 43 kilometers, or about 27 miles. Departure is on time, the train pulling out at 14.05. We leave Namba Station behind and head out into the city, with most of our route running on elevated tracks amongst the buildings. The train passes many stations today, with the line having 30 intermediate stops in all, but this train only serves 6 of them. The first of these is Shin Imamiya, a busy part of the city and an interchange for JR commuter lines. You can also see one of Nankai's older commuter units, with this 6000 series dating back to the 1970s. Now let's take a look around the interior of this funky looking train. The seating is covered in a brown and grey leopard pattern, fitting in with the other eccentric design choices. There's a lot of padding here, and good ergonomic support. Up top, you'll find a comfortable head cushion, with a smart brown anti-macassar. The seat's headrest also features large wings. Fixed armrests are available at all seats, featuring a soft leather coating. There's also a surface for smaller items, such as a drink in the middle, but you'd be better using the dedicated cup holder for that. Legroom is absolutely fantastic. Even the tallest of passengers will find plenty of comfort here. The seat in front features a small storage net, with a loop for holding an umbrella. Above this, you can find a large seatback table, which also has a cup holder of its own. Lastly, at the top of the seat, there's a folding coat hook. Now there are a few more cool design choices on this train, which we'll get to later. For the time being, let's take a look out of the unique circle windows. These were designed to replicate the windows aboard a plane, but I think these are quite a bit bigger than anything you'll find taking off from Kansai International. You can also find a sunblind at the top of the window, which can be pulled down just like on a plane. Our journey through the south of Osaka continues, with the lower density of buildings indicating that we're getting further from the centre. Anyway, Let's go and have a look around the rest of the train. By the vestibule doors, there's a pair of large luggage stacks, an essential for an airport service. These also allow you to lock your luggage in place, so that you can sit back, relax, and enjoy the journey with peace of mind. Coach 5 is another super seat carriage, also with a large aisle and a very open feeling. Two of the carriages feature toilets, in the form of a male urinal. You can of course find a unisex toilet cubicle here too. This features a sink to rinse your hands, as well as some toilet seat cleaner. This is not soap. I really should have looked at that better. Like with almost every train in Japan, this is a western style sit down toilet, and not a squat toilet. Moving on, we have this strange corridor, with shutters either side. I did think this was checked luggage storage, but if you know any better, then please tell me in the comments. The remainder of the train's composition is standard seating, being similar to super seat, but in a 2 plus 2 layout. This station is Kishiwada, another stop in the sprawling metropolis that is Osaka. Much like other areas along the way, Kishiwada is also served by JR, at their own station just one and a half kilometres away. We are soon back up to near top speed. Believe it or not, despite the train's spaceship-esque external design, these units are only capable of 120 kilometres an hour. However, this is no issue, 
as the commuter railways to the airport rarely allow us to reach even close to our maximum speed. But let's get back to the interior, as there are still a few more things to show off. Between seats, you can find the button for the seat's ample recline. This level of comfort is exactly what you'd want after a long flight. And speaking of things you'd want after a long flight, the train features free Wi-Fi, allowing you to get connected again. This was easy to connect to, just requiring a few button presses. Once online, the speed is adequate for simple web browsing and messaging. As well as the large luggage stacks in the vestibule, there's also overhead luggage lockers. The design here isn't the most efficient, but it's another nod to the design of a plane. Just make sure you don't leave anything behind. We're now approaching the Skygate Bridge, which carries the road and railway from Osaka City to Kansai International Airport. The airport is located on an artificial island in Osaka Bay, an attribute it shares with Kobe Airport, just 23 kilometers north of here. Skygate Bridge carries six lanes of road traffic on top, with a two-track railway down here. At 3,750 meters, it's the longest double-deck truss bridge in the world. But this airport's island is actually sinking. Since opening in 1994, it has sunk 11 meters. This might not seem a lot, but an airport is the last thing I'd want to sink into the ocean. As we land on the airport's artificial island, it's time to talk about how much this trip costs. For this trip, I bought a reservation online for a cost of 730 yen. However, I found out on the day that you also need a travel ticket, which isn't well explained on the website. This came to a total of 1,660 Japanese yen, which for a first class trip on such a cool train is fairly reasonable value for money, especially as it's on an airport route. We end up arriving into Kansai International Airport on time at 14.42. In conclusion, whilst the rapid service isn't the only way of getting to the airport, or even necessarily the fastest depending on your end destination, it is by far the coolest way to travel between these two points. With comfy seats, beautiful design and a speedy journey, I was left very impressed by this service. If you enjoyed this video, then click up here now for a look at one of Europe's strange looking trains, Renfe's high speed Talgo units. <laughs>